This is a video for the higher level version of meiosis, topic 10.1. Okay, so when we tend to talk about genetics, we usually kind of simplify how uh, traits are controlled. And we usually talk about the ones that are controlled by a single gene, like whether or not you have free earlobes like these or attached, or whether or not you have a widow's peak or not. However, most traits are controlled by multiple genes on many different chromosomes, and that's why their location in the genome is so hard uh, to kind of pin down. And so great examples of that are things like skin color, eye color, height is why they're hard to predict. Again, uh, not only because of environmental interactions, but because they are controlled by not one, but multiple genes. All right, so this diagram of the cell cycle over here should look familiar to you. So we focus a lot of our time on the cell division part, but really interphase is super important, particularly this S phase, which is where the DNA replication happens. And I wanna talk about a couple of homologous chromosomes here. So homologous chromosomes are like a chromosome from the mom and a chromosome from the dad. They're the same length, they contain the same genes in the same location, maybe just different alleles. So this is um, what homologous, looks, homologous chromosomes look like before replication. After replication, they look a little bit different. So then they're in their replicated shape with this centromere holding them together. And this is how we generally see them. So when we see homologous chromosomes like this um, in their like classic X shape, that just means they've already been replicated. Okay, now during meiosis and particularly prophase one, okay, we're going to experience a crossing over um, between these homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes are present uh, in this form any time we undergo cell division, but they only snuggle up and experience crossing over um, during meiosis and during that prophase one. So crossing over works something like this. They kind of snuggle up together and intertwine, and then sections of those chromosomes are exchanged between the maternal and paternal chromosomes. Now, the number of spots where this happens and how much genetic material is exchanged seems to be totally random. Okay, so it might exchange at four different spots or one, it might be a lot or it might be just a little. Um, there's no way to predict that. But we do have a name for the spots where this crossing over occurs and that's called a chiasma. If I wanna talk about plural, Okay, like reference both of them. That's called chiasmata, uh, but you do need to uh, know that word. So how is it that chromosomes are allowed to do this? Well, that's because if you're a homologous chromosome, that means you have the same genes in the same locations. So they might be switching alleles, right? Like we might be trading a little b for a big b, okay? So they might be switching those alleles, but the genes are the same. So this must be like the gene for um, earlobe type or something, okay? So the gene has to be the same, but they might trade alleles. Okay, so again, if I wanted to draw that, um, I'm going to show the homologous chromosomes in their replicated form. Okay, so I have the maternal and paternal DNA. And I'm gonna show this in three phases, so I guess I better make this just a tad smaller here. Okay, so after they kind of snuggle up together, they're going to kind of intertwine something like this. And then they are going to recombine genetic material in a certain number of spots. So something like this. And this, okay? And these spots where the crossing over occurred are called chiasma. All right, so once we're done with meiosis one and crossing over, we can start talking about the separation of alleles during gamete formation. 
So we know that when this chromosome is going to um, undergo meiosis two, that part of it is going to go into one gamete and the other part is going to go into the other. Now, that is completely independent of this chromosome. So for example, this chromosome could go into this cell and this one into this cell, okay? Mendel's law of independent assortment says that one allele doesn't follow another. So this allele has nothing to do with the inheritance of this allele, that they align randomly, they segregate randomly, and they're not linked together when they make it into their gametes. And again, that's all because of this random alignment. So for example, okay, in this picture down here, we can have this arrangement where these two lighter chromosomes line up on the left and the other homologs line up on the right. And so when they segregate, we're going to get these combinations or they could randomly line up in this arrangement. And you can see how that change in that random alignment produces different kinds of combinations. So again, Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment says that this chromosome sorts completely independently of this chromosome. And that helps us to calculate the number of different ways that these genes can be sorted. So that formula is two to the nth power, where n is the haploid number. We always use n for that number. So for humans, since we have 23 chromosomes in our haploid cells, we would take two to the 23rd power. And if I do that calculation, which I totally did in my head and didn't have to pause at all, so impressive, we can see that just because of the number of ways that these chromosomes can possibly align gives us over 8 million different gamete possibilities. And that doesn't even take into account the different ways that crossing over can occur in prophase one. So this is just the number of ways that genes can randomly or chromosomes can randomly align themselves during metaphase. All right, so let's take a look at a cell in metaphase one of meiosis. So the first division in metaphase. So in metaphase one, we are still lined up in homologous pairs, okay? So they're not all completely like up and down across the equatorial plate like in mitosis, okay? They're, again, lined up as homologous pairs. And of course, some crossing over could have occurred, which I didn't draw in here, okay? Um, but I'm not gonna go through all that. And of course, the spindle fibers would be attached to only one of them. In anaphase one, those spindle fibers are going to pull those homologous pairs apart. So we don't have homologous pairs anymore. Okay, they're gonna be separated in anaphase one. All right, so now if we have to take a look at metaphase two, we already have two cells because metaphase one ends with a cytokinesis, a cellular split. So in metaphase two, Okay, now we don't have homologous pairs anymore, okay, but we do have two cells. So the homologous pairs have split. Here's one homolog, okay, they're now in two different cells, okay, and here they are there. So in anaphase two, and I guess I should show these spindle fibers, they're connecting like this. Okay, in anaphase two, these spindle fibers are going to shorten, and that's going to pull the sister chromatids apart. So, you can start to see how this will become a gamete, this will become one, this will become one, this will become one. Okay, so a much different um, process in anaphase two where we're splitting apart those sister chromatids. Okay, so Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment says that these different alleles are segregated separately. Like, so for this example, the blue is separated independently of the red. And that is true, except if two genes are what we call linked. So for example, the genes for hair color and eye color are linked 
because they're found on the same chromosome. So they're often inherited together because, you know, eventually this will split down the middle, okay, and half will go into one cell and half will go into another. So the genes for hair color and eye color often go together, which is why you'll sometimes see, like, light-haired people with light color eyes, dark-haired people with dark color eyes, those genes are found on the same chromosome and they are not independent of each other. They're what we call linked. And that'll do it for chapter 10.1.